Hey everyone, welcome to Her Voice, a collaboration between Life Straw and Outside Business Journal that elevates stories about women in the outdoor industry as we continue working towards an equitable future. I'm your host, Denisha Jenkins, and my guest today is Sam Ortiz. Hi, Denisha. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited to hear from you. In case you don't know Sam, she's a plus-size Latinx mountaineer. She's an adventure photographer, a model, and she's the founder of the Climb Big community. So Sam, can you tell us a little bit more about the mission and what you've been up to these days? Absolutely, yeah. So Climb Big is an initiative that I started um, a couple of years ago now with the intention of really getting more plus size climbers into the rock climbing industry and the rock climbing world. Um, rock climbing has been something that has previously been kind of inaccessible to people of size. Um, and mostly that's because of the gear. And so I myself am a rock climber and I've been a climber for five or six years now. And I started Climb Big because as a plus size climber myself, I really wasn't seeing anyone else around me that was climbing um, in a larger body. And so Climb Big kind of started um, as me hosting meetups where I was really focused on, you know, inviting plus size people to come climbing at, you know, my climbing gym. And I would teach them the ropes, literally. And at first, I didn't quite realize how big of a thing it was going to become. You know, I just, basically, I just wanted to share my passion with people um, and, you know, make some friends who were going to really have similar experiences as me. But apparently, I needed it and many other people needed it too, because I got an amazing response. You know, I kind of put it out there just on the internet. Um, like, hey, I'm hosting this plus size climbing meetup. And people were very interested, you know, within a week, it was, you know, 25 people, 40 people, 100 people, 150 people um, who were interested in coming to rock climb with me, um, which is clearly too many people for one meetup. Um, and so I started having a series of meetups. There are two other people who run this kind of initiative with me. Um, their names are Bennett Ron and Megan Banker. And they're the only two other plus size climbers that I had been able to meet. <laughs> and so I invited them, you know, to, to work on this project with me. And the three of us together have been, you know, doing everything that we can to make rock climbing and the outdoors in general just more accessible to plus Thank you for sharing that story. I think a lot of times people just think a great idea just happens, but it doesn't happen. There's work behind it. There's a story behind it. Uh, so thank you for sharing like how it came to be. And you used the word accessibility and a lot of people use that in various contexts. Could you tell us what does accessibility mean or look like in the context of, of Climb Big and, and the movement that you're leading right now? Yeah, absolutely. So accessibility for us is really focused on accessibility for plus size people. Um, so rock climbing in general is pretty inaccessible to plus size people. And most of that has to do with gear. And so whenever we are talking about, you know, a, a space that is accessible to plus size people, we mean both with gear, we've made sure that the gear will fit and kind of emotionally, um, you know, whenever plus size people have historically been um, involved in, you know, outdoor sports or just like athletic events in general, a lot of people come away with, have come away with trauma, right? Um, a lot of people have had really negative experiences trying to recreate in their bodies, um, either because of outside people um, kind of either bullying or, or not being quite as welcoming as they need. And also just sometimes because of performance reasons, right? And so what we have tried to do is to take away some of those main barriers um, for plus size people getting into rock climbing. And again, that is almost <laughs> the harness, the whether or not a harness is going to fit is one of the hugest barriers to people getting into rock climbing. Um, people have you know, told me horror stories of going to try to go to a rock climbing gym with their, you know, a group of their friends or their family and getting there 
and trying to put on a harness and it not fitting, right? They're humiliated, they're embarrassed. And also then they have to, you know, make a decision of do, does everyone leave with me? And I've, you know, ruined the day of fun. Or do I stay in this environment that is wildly unwelcoming to me, you know, that hasn't thought of me and my needs, that doesn't think that I or a person like me could participate or should participate? I'm not, I don't know if I'm afraid of heights per se, but getting up pretty high can be scary alone. So climbing can be scary for just people, most people. Um, it's probably why it's considered like an extreme sport <laughs> to some folks. But for yourself, like, how do you combat just that basic fear of climbing? Like what's been your experience with that? Absolutely, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think most people have a fear of heights and a fear of falling, right? So like just baseline, everyone comes into rock climbing with, you know, pretty pretty high fear, um, I, including me. I am actually very afraid of heights, <laughs> which I know seems kind of counterintuitive for me being a rock climber and teaching other people how to rock climb. You know, my journey into climbing was pretty slow. Um, so whenever I started climbing, uh, the first time I ever tried climbing was at this very small wall at the YMCA gym that I was a part of. And, you know, my first day of trying it, I was shaking. My hands were visibly shaking. My palms were sweaty. Um, and I got like one move up the wall and then I came back down and I cried. Um, <laughs> So I've absolutely dealt with that fear as well. Um, when it comes to rock climbing, there are so many other fears that are stacked on top in addition to the fear of heights and the fear of falling. Right, right, right. And when we talk about you know, mitigating some of these um, things that keep plus size people from climbing, that's one of the things that we really take into consideration as well, right? As I mentioned, a lot of people have a lot of trauma around, you know, moving in their bodies, and especially trying something new in their bodies with a group of strangers in public, in addition to being afraid of heights, you know, it's really scary. Yeah. You don't have to be able to do a pull up to go rock climbing. And I think that's a misconception people who have never climbed have. And that's simply not the case. I could never do a pull up to save my life. And I still climb regularly and enjoy it. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I just tried to do dips and pull-ups that was my <laughs> fitness challenge and now I'm like I don't know if I, <laughs> I'm one of those people that I'm like I don't know if I would be able to climb my upper body strength is not that great you could you absolutely <laughs> could <laughs> well you brought up a lot of the like assumptions and like bias that there that exist whether it's we've internalized it or we or we project it onto other people based on body type body size and and kind of shared with us about your growing and I'm combating fear. So how have you learned to like, trust yourself and your body um, when it comes to recreational activities and particularly like with climbing? I didn't, you know, start my journey in the outdoor world feeling as strong and confident and fearless as I am now. Um, so it's been, it's, it's been <laughs> a becoming and it's an unlearning. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have absolutely had and internalized many of those, you know, things that the, the media and just the, the world in general has said about plus size bodies or fat bodies. Um, and I think that that was a huge barrier to me even getting out to begin with. You know, I've always loved the outdoors. Um, I've always felt, you know, this sense of, of calm whenever I'm there and this, this drive to explore, but I didn't always feel welcome in the outdoors. And, and I didn't always think that it was something that I could do necessarily. And a big part of that was not really seeing people that look like me whenever I was out there. You know, and you think of like the way we frame what it means to be a leader or how we frame things around like movements, all of those things come together intersect of like there's this in person, there's this inner uh, dialogue and process, but then there's also external factors and people who are part of us developing that and either helpful ways or harmful ways. And so as a leader in the climbing space, what what or who would you say inspires or like motivates you um, to keep going or to keep you know going after challenges and things of that nature? Well, I think perhaps the biggest uh, motivation for me is the people who I have been able to interact with and teach. 
Um, the, the feedback I've gotten from people is tremendously like heartwarming <laughs> and, and motivating, you know, people tell me things like, you know, I've wanted to do this for 15 years and I mm -hmm. never got up the courage until I saw you do it, you know, or, um, after one of the, the climbing, you know, meetups that I, that I led, someone told me I have never once before tried an athletic activity and not left crying. Wow. And she was like, this is the first time. This is the only time I have ever done something like this and felt strong and felt powerful instead of feeling, you know, sad and hurt and ashamed. Um, so I think my biggest motivator is, you know, being, <laughs> being the person that I need to see and also being the person that other people need to see as well. You know, proving to them if, if I can do it, you can probably do it too, you know? Yeah. I think also that there are, you know, there are some role models out there that aren't necessarily climbers, but that I've taken a lot of inspiration from. Mm -hmm. So Myrna Valeria is one of them. Um, so she is a plus size ultra marathon runner. Um, and she is absolutely incredible in like every, <laughs> every sense. And she has really, you know, paved the way for plus size athletes of all kinds. You know, she's really done the work of breaking down huge barriers and showing people, hey, I might be plus size, but I am extremely capable. I am very talented. I am strong. And, and I, she shows people that, you know, you don't have to lose weight to do, you know, to do these amazing things. And you also don't have to be doing athletic things in order to lose weight. You know, you can exist happily, comfortably, healthily, healthily, if that's a word, <laughs> in the body that you're in and, you know, be an adventurer, be an athlete and accomplish amazing things. Part of it is um, like believing, like starting from a different place of assumption and expectation, but then also partnering with you through as brands and as leaders in the outdoor industry of like supporting your work by creating the gear, you know, making sure people have what they need to even participate and then also showcasing those who are participating. So that's like three areas, three concrete ways that we could support, right? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. And so lastly, Sam, what's like one piece of advice or a message you would love to leave with our viewers today? Well, I, I think I'd like to leave people with kind of the same um, inspiration that has led me, you know, no matter your body size, you are worthy of being out there, of taking up space in the outdoors and for asking for what you need and that you are allowed to start something even before you've seen anybody who looks like you do it. There's enough space for all of us to you know, be out there, to be recreating, to find joy in it. And you don't have to wait to be invited. You can you know, go for it yourself. That was very powerful and encouraging. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for being here, Sam. Can you let the people know how they can find you, how they can connect with you and how they can support what you're doing? Absolutely. Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram at Sam Ortiz photo. Um, you can also find us on Instagram at climb.big. Um, we also have a Facebook community called the climb big community group on Facebook and a website with, you know, information on what it means to be a plus size climber, where to find harnesses that fit our personal stories and things like that at climbbig.org. Awesome. Well, thank you all for tuning in for this episode of Her Voice and shout out to our partner, LifeStraw, for making these conversations possible. Stay tuned for more episodes as we chat with women from all corners of the industry. Thank you and we'll see you soon.